Well, guys, I'm gonna slow this down in a few minutes ago. I gotta say, overall, it was a it was a good show. I'm not gonna say it was a great show. I'm not gonna say it was a crap show. I'd say it's you know decent to good. It was better than Night of Champions, not by a lot, but just by a little bit, in my opinion. And um, yeah, this is a review. Uh, opener you had was Sheamus vs. Christian. Uh, pretty good opener, I gotta say. Um, some good back and forth action. By the way, far get into the match. Whole crowd though, the entire night sucked. They were just like dead the entire night. So that kind of killed the pay-per-view a little bit. But uh, like I said, Sheamus and uh, Christian had a pretty good opener. I like the spot where uh, Christian speared uh, Sheamus outside the ring, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then you know, he rolled Sheamus back in the ring and gave him a freaking another spear, which was just great. And like I said, just a lot of uh, good back and forth counters in this match. And you know, at the end, Sheamus, not Sheamus, yeah, Sheamus went for the... Uh, uh, Celtic Cross, they call it now, they keep switching the name, to, it was like Pale Justice, then it was like High Cross, then it was the freaking Celtic Cross, then it went to the freaking Pale Justice again, they keep changing the name of the move, but uh, Christian countered it, and he went for the kill switch, uh, no, uh, like Seamus countered it again, and uh, I forgot what happened, Christian would do something, but uh, Seamus gave him the big bro kick, it's 1-2-3 to win the match, like I said, overall, pretty good match, good stuff. Hopefully Sheamus is the number one contender, by the way, because you'll see why. Then you had a uh, backstage segment with Mark Henry and um, a Matt Stryker. Uh, Matt Stryker was interview, and Mark Henry said, Orin's going to join the Hall of Pain, basically, blah, blah, blah. And then I go to the next match, which was Sin Cara versus Sin Cara. Gotta say, very disappointing match. Uh, the crowd even chanted boring. Fuck you, crowd, by the way. This crowd was just a whole different thing, but... I, it was just a, this was just a disappointing match overall. Anyways, uh, there's a lot of high flying, a lot of great counters, but um, yeah, it's just it's very disappointing. The Sin Cara with the blue mask, the real Sin Cara, or they're calling him Sin Cara One and Sin Cara Two, which was like okay. By the way, uh, Sin Cara Number Two with the black mask or you know Hunico, you can call him. He had some creepy ass music. Like it was the same theme as Sin Cara's normal theme, but it was like. It had, it had, like, some weird stuff in the theme. It, it, it scared the crap out of me. I was like, okay, I'm scared to watch this. But, um, like I said, disappointing match. I've said it about, like, three times now. Uh, Sin Cara won to get the win when he did, like, a sun, uh, what's it called? Sun's, what the fuck? Sun's, like, what the, f whatever it's, what it's called. I can't freaking, I don't know the name of it. Some kind of power bomb, like a sun flip power bomb or something like that, whatever it's called. Two of the others in car got the one, two, three, and won the match. So, a disappointing match, but it was decent. Uh, next, you had uh, Punk and Otunga backstage, and uh, you know Otunga asking, uh, offering Punk his legal crap, and uh, you know Punk basically made fun of Otunga. He's like, "You got a bow tie, your stupid little suit, blah blah blah." Whatever is whatever segment. Uh, next, you had a match that was added to the show: WWE Tag Team Championship match. Kofi Kingston, Evan Bourne versus Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. Now, overall, I thought it was a good match, to tell you guys the truth. Uh, I thought it was some great tag team work with uh, Ziggler and uh, Jack Swagger. I thought it was a great, great tag team work. I love how uh, someone, uh, the referee got distracted by someone on the other team and like Ziggler or Swagger would attack like, Kofi or Bourne while the referee wasn't looking and the referee turned around. It was They were doing some great uh, heel tag team work. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of made Air Boom look weak, but it was still an overall a pretty good tag team match, in my opinion. Ending came when um, uh, Ziggler was setting, uh, that Ziggler told Swagger to go on the top rope, and he put Bourne on uh, Swagger, so Swagger is going to do a powerbomb off the top rope. But Bourne countered that into a Huracarana, uh, did a Huracarana pin. And, uh, you know, before Ziggler can break it up, Kofi, like, pulls Ziggler's leg, pulls him out of the ring, and their free counts to one, two, three. Air Boom retains the tag team titles. Like I said, I thought it was a pretty good tag team match, in my opinion, but, yeah, whatever. And from there on, you go on to the Hell in a Cell match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Mark Henry versus Randy Orton. I personally thought that was a pretty good match. I thought it was better than a Night of Champions match, to be honest. Uh, they used the Cell a lot in this match. I thought they used this perfectly in this match. Uh, a good majority of the match, I'd say probably about 85% of the match they spent, you know, outside the ring. They weren't in the ring a lot. They outside most of the time, which I thought was a big, big plus. And, um, that was a pretty good match. You know, it wasn't great, but it was pretty good. 
uh, ending came when uh, Randy Orton actually gave Mark Henry an RKO and went for the pin, got the one two, but Mark Henry kicked out. And you know, Randy Orton decided to go for his punt kick, which we haven't seen in a while. When's the last time we saw him uh, do that? Which was what was it back in March when he did it to like Mason Ryan? Yeah, I think it was a Mason Ryan last time we saw it. He went for that, but when he was running, Mark Henry got up, picked him up, World Strong Slam, one, two, three, retains the World Weight Championship. After the match, Randy Orton attacked Mark Henry with the steel chair, and Mark Henry ran like a little bitch backstage. Like, it made him look pretty weak, to tell you the truth. He just ran back. He's like, I don't want nothing to do with you. So Mark Henry retains the World Weight Championship. Randy Orton, uh, he... He shouldn't be getting another title shot anytime soon, so I'm kind of interested to see what they do with Randy Orton. I don't know if they're going to have him have another match with Christian at Vengeance, maybe, because I do see Sheamus facing uh, Mark Henry at Vengeance for the title, but um, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with Orton from now on. Uh, next, you have Cody Rhodes come out, cut a promo about the Intercontinental Championship, says that the uh, Intercontinental Championship needs to be like, uh, is this figure or something like that, he needs to reconstruct it. So he throws it into a paper bag, and he has like a drawstring bag. He pulls out the classic Intercontinental Championship, you know, the white striped one. Well, the not, well not the white striped one, the uh, white uh, leather belt. It was the classic one. It was it was great. It was a markout moment for sure. And he says that he's going to wear this, the title proud like all the legends did, you know, Ricky Dragon Steamboat, Stone Cold Steve Austin, all the, you know, legends, Macho Man, all of them. And then uh, John Laronides comes out and says that he's going to inform Cody that Triple H wants him to defend his title right here, right now. And John Morrison comes out, so they have an Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, it was it was all right. You know, to tell you the truth, it wasn't a great match. It wasn't a good match. It was just decent. Nothing special to talk about. Uh, Cody Rhodes basically tried to run away in the entire match. He actually wrapped himself around a, one of the steel poles, which I thought was pretty dumb. But, you know, Morrison got him off. And the guy in the ring. And nothing special to talk about this match. You had Morrison basically dominate Rhodes. And then you had Rhodes basically dominate Morrison. They just kept switching back and forth dominance. And then towards the end of the match, uh, Morrison went for his uh, flying chuck kick. But Cody Rhodes dodged it. And then rolled up John Morrison to 1-2-3 to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Like I said, um, it was a decent match. Nothing special to talk about. And then you go backstage, you have Laronitis and Triple H backstage, and Triple H says you better not make any more matches, because if you do, it's your ass. And then Laronitis is like, we got a problem, Miz and R-Truth are attacking the superstars, and they run backstage, and you have uh, Miz and Truth getting restrained by, I think it was security. Oh yeah, speaking of Miz and R-Truth, during Christian's entrance, they actually showed Miz and R-Truth coming out with like, sitting down, like, they're in the audience, but they got kicked out by Laronitis, but, <laughs> I don't know why I keep forgetting these things, but, they're getting pulled out, and I guess they, I think they tagged Kofi and Evan, because those are the superstars down from what I saw, and, you know, Triple H says, you better make sure they're out of the building, but it was a whatever segment, um, from there on, you go on to, how many matches are that, alright, you go on to the Divas Championship match, Kelly Kelly with Beth Phoenix, decent match, nothing special, um, they had a thing where, um, well, they didn't have a thing in the match because it, it was just a Divas match, nothing special. Um, uh, Beth had Kelly in the submission, and Natalia was like cutting a promo while she had her submission, which I'm like, what the fuck? She's like, scream, Kelly, scream. And uh, I'm not saying I didn't like to scream, but I was like, alright, this is getting pretty annoying. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, uh, eventually at the mat, after, uh, towards the end, you know, Natalia hit Kelly with the mic, and then Beth Phoenix gave her the uh, Gland Slam got the one, two, three to win the Divas Championship. Don't know why I didn't do it at Night of Champions. I mean, all I did was have Kelly had a title for two more weeks, which was like that's pointless to do. I just get title for Beth, but whatever, a decent match. Whatever. From there, I'm going to the main event Triple Thread Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Championship. John Cena versus CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio. I gotta say, I thought this was a good match. And they didn't use a cell as much as uh, Henry Norton did. They didn't use a lot of weapons. They, well, not a lot of weapons. They used a steel chair for basically the majority of the match. They had one table spot when seeing Punk, Punk, Punk <laughs> by the table outside it out, but it was nothing special. Uh, CM Punk basically took all the spots too with the cell. Like, whenever someone got thrown into the cell, yeah, CM Punk took that. Like, when um, 
He was on the steel steps, like, mocking Cena. You know, Devereux came up, pushed him into the freaking cell. And, um, when CM Punk was on the, uh, top of the turnbuckle, he got pushed off into the cell. And, you know, Cena had Del Rio in the AA position, and Punk did a suicide dive into the cell with them. It was just great, great stuff. But, uh, like I said, the, the steel chair got introduced a lot. And uh, Cena, uh, Cena actually surprised me, because Del Rio had uh, Punk in a headlock, and Cena came out of nowhere and gave him a leg drop, which I thought was just like, whoa, that was out of nowhere. Uh, but towards the end of the match, uh, uh, Cena had, uh, oh, Del Rio pushed Punk through the table, he was on top rope, and then Del Rio pushed him and Punk with the table, Cena put Del Rio in the STF, Ricardo Riaz knocked the ref down, got the key, opened the cell, tried to attack John Cena with the steel pipe, but, um, uh, no, yeah, but, uh, Cena blocked him, I went outside the cell, gave Ricardo AA, uh, Del Rio hits Cena with the steel pipe, threw him out of the cell. Del Rio takes the lock, locks the cell from the inside, so Cena can no way get in. Takes the key, throws it under the ring. Yeah, him and Punk go at it for about five minutes, and uh, you know Punk moved to GTS, but you know Del Rio countered it, and then he took uh, Cena got out, got up. He tried to get inside the cell. Uh, Del Rio took the steel pipe, hit Punk in the side of the face, or. He hit him somewhere in the head. I don't know exactly where he hit him. Hits Punk in the side of the head with the pipe. One, two, three, wins the WWE Championship. And I'm thinking, okay, if you're going to have Del Rio win the title at Hell in a Cell, or win the match at Hell in a Cell, why did you take the title off from a night of champions? You only had Cena have the title for two weeks, and then you just gave it up to Del Rio. So, that title switch at night of champions was 100% pointless, considering... Del Rio's gonna win it two weeks later, so I was like, that was completely dumb. Honestly, when Cena won the title, I thought they were just gonna do that for Del Rio to win the title at Mexico, because they're doing the uh, uh, Raw tapings, or the TV tapings for Raw and SmackDown Mexico in a few weeks, so I was thinking, alright, Cena won, so Del Rio can win the title at Mexico, but that's not what happened, apparently. So Del Rio's like mocking Cena to the cell, cell goes up, Cena runs in the cell, it starts trying to beat, uh, it starts beating down Del Rio. All of a sudden, two guys in black suits come in the ring. The cell lowers back down. And they take off the mask, and it's Miz and Truth, obviously. And they're just beating down Miz, Punk, Del Rio, and the referees, too. And then you have Triple H and Laronitis, and the whole roster coming out, trying to get in the cell. Literally, like, they surround the cell, like, hitting it, trying to get in. Which was, I was like, oh my god, this is chaos. And, you know, uh, finally some cops come down with the... What's uh, what the hell? Uh, bolters or whatever. Cut the chain. Miz and Truth surrender. They like to put their hands around their heads. Uh, they arrest Miz and Truth and they're bringing them out. Triple H comes out of nowhere and just beats down Miz and Truth. And then they hold Triple H back. They have Miz and Truth go. They walk. Uh, they they show the cops um, bringing Miz and Truth uh, to the back. They go to Triple H and then the show ends. So with that angle being done after the Hell in a Cell match, I'm very anxious to see where this goes. So. Yeah, overall, on a cell, I'd say it was a good pay-per-view. It wasn't great or anything. Uh, nothing to go out of your way to see, for sure. I mean, if you really have nothing to watch and you're bored, you know, pop, watch a show. It was alright. It was a pretty short show, too. It was only like a two-hour or 35-minute show, so. Whatever, Hell in a Cell, like I said, good show. And uh, this is my review. I'm Zach, and I'm out, guys. Thanks for watching.